Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to be painting this burning sage brush or smudge stick. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications. I put out new videos every Wednesday. The brushes that we are going to be using are from these three packs. If you want to follow along with these exact brushes, you can get them following the links in the description, but you can totally use any brushes that you already have. Essentially, you will just need something with streamline turned up, which is something that you can adjust. This will be used to actually draw the outline of the plants. You will need a texture brush for adding some nice noise and shade, and then you'll need some flame and lighting effect brushes. I do have a starter canvas with all of the layers set up and the color palette in it, which is available to download for my newsletter subscribers. You can become one by signing up following the link below, but I also go through how to set this up in the next couple steps. So let's get right into it. So to start off, I am working in a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas that's set to 300 DPI and I have six layers set up and my very first step is going to be to change the background color and I'm just choosing a darker gray color. Then on my bottom most layer, which is where we're going to be drawing the sage, I am using this darker grayish green to color drop and fill the entire screen. And now I'm going to be erasing with this frizzy brush from the rough and raw set. And I have a brush size set here to 6%. And I'm going to be using the eraser to draw the shape of the leaves. Start by drawing in a few leaves that are fully connected to stems. We're gonna draw in leaves and stems layered behind these so it helps to have a few full ones drawn up front as a starting point. It's important to remember as you're layering in the stems and leaves that what we're doing here is removing the excess color. So the lines that we're erasing won't be part of the design necessarily, but only the green that remains. In a way, it's kind of like carving out a rubber stamp if that's something you've done, if that helps make sense. Keep on layering in leaves until you have a full bundle. Once you've got a full bundle drawn, we're going to remove the extra green from this layer on the outside of the bundle. Go into the selection tool on the upper left and set the tool to automatic. Then tap once anywhere outside of the bundle. This will automatically select this color that we want to remove. Then tap this arrow up here and use three fingers to scrub the screen back and forth, which will clear the selection. You'll see that there's still a remainder of color on the border of the bundle. So using the eraser tool, I'm just going to manually remove that. Now we are going to add some texture. To do this, I'm going into the layers panel and I'm duplicating this layer that has my sage on it. Then I'm setting the duplicate of this, the upper layer, to the blend mode multiply. Next, I'm going into the eraser tool and I'm going to grab a texture brush. The brush that I am using for this is from the Memento Shader Brushes pack. I am going to be using the Shader Brush 5. To help give some definition to each individual leaf, we are going to be working on each one separately. The easiest way to do this is to grab the selection tool and keeping it set on automatic, tap to select a single leaf. To make the process go a little faster, I'm also going to select a few other leaves in the bunch that don't directly touch each other. And then we can repeat this step a few times later on. Then tapping to use the eraser tool, I'm setting the brush size here to about 80%. Using really light pressure, I'm going to brush in this texture, which is going to then lift up some of the color from each of the areas that are selected. 
If you're having difficulty seeing the difference between what is and is not selected, you can make it clearer by going up here into the wrench on the upper left and then under preferences. Down here, there's this option for selection mask visibility. You can increase this percentage to have a higher contrast on the selection mask. I'm going to set mine to about 40%. Once this first set of leaves has texture, tap the selection tool to deselect. Then tap the selection tool once more and repeat the steps to tap to select a handful of leaves automatically, making sure that you're choosing ones that don't directly touch. From the selection tool, tap the eraser tool, and you can then move on to adding the texture to these leaves that you've selected. Once again, tap the selection tool to deselect and then tap it again to select the next few leaves and stems. Repeat this as many times as you need until all of the leaves and stems have this texture. You may have to zoom in to make sure that you're able to select just these smaller stem pieces. Back in the layers panel, I am moving on to my lavender layer. I'm going to select this softer purple color. For this, I am using the Rippleizer brush, which is from the Rough and Raw pack. I have the size here set to about 8%. I'm drawing these little lavender bits by combining several different teardrop shapes, all connected and clustered together, and then tucking them in amongst the leaves in a few places. Once you've drawn a half dozen or so pieces of lavender, Go back into the Layers panel and duplicate the layer just like we did with the Sage. Set the Blend Mode of the upper layer to Multiply. This time, when adding texture, because these lavender pieces are spaced out, we can add the texture without worrying about selecting each piece individually. So switching to the Eraser tool and setting the size here to about 40%. Now I can erase to create a bit of texture on this Multiply layer. Next, I want to create a nice gap between the lavender bits and the sage leaves. First, in the layers panel, tap the lower lavender layer, the one that we haven't erased on at all. Then press and hold two fingers on this layer to select the layer contents. Tap back in the layers panel and then move down to the bottom sage layers. Tap both of these layers so that they are selected. You'll see that they're both blue. And then you can either use three fingers to scrub the screen or tap the arrow to drag the selection off the canvas, either way, removing the overlap. Now we still need to carve out a small border or a margin. So in the layers panel, move to work down on the very bottom sage layer. Tap the eraser tool and set it to the rippleizer brush. I am setting the eraser size here to about 2%. Now I'm going to erase around the perimeter of each piece of lavender to create this little margin. Next, in the Layers panel, use two fingers to press and hold on this bottom sage layer to select the entire layer contents. When the layer is selected and the bottom selection tool pops up, tap Invert here, which is the second option in, to invert the selection. Go back into the Layers panel and move to the Multiply Sage layer. Then use three fingers to scrub the screen, which will clear the selection, removing everything that we erased from the bottom sage layer from this multiply layer as well. Now we have a nice clean margin between the lavender and the sage leaves. In the layers panel, move up to the string layer. Select a darker contrasting color. I am using this clay color. For this step, I'm going to use the frizzy brush, which is from the rough and raw pack. 
and I'm setting the size here to about 2%. Starting at the base of the bundle, draw in some curved lines crisscrossing some of them to represent the string wrapping around the bundle. Drawing these small curves here helps indicate that the thread is wrapping around a 3D object. Now go into the Layers panel and duplicate this string layer. Tap the arrow in the upper left to move this duplicate layer, shifting it up so it's offset slightly. I forgot to, but you can turn magnetics on here to help keep everything aligned. Now merge the layers by pinching them together. Staying on this string layer, use the eraser tool with the frizzy brush to erase these areas where the lines cross over so that it begins to look like overlapping string. I'm also adding in a margin any place that the string is overlapped. Back in the Layers panel, I'm rearranging my String Fill layer to be underneath this String Outline layer that we've just created. For the fill, I'm selecting this lighter pink color and I'm going to be using the Frizzy brush. Here I'm setting the size to about 4%. Now I'm drawing to fill in the outlines of the string. I'm okay with this being slightly outside the lines in some places. I feel like it has a cool look that fits with this aesthetic. Back in the Layers panel, merge the String Outline and String Fill layers together by pinching. Yay! Yay! Then duplicate this single string layer and change the blend mode of the upper one to multiply. We're not going to add distress to this one since it's so narrow, but we will get a cool shadow effect with this in a moment. Now it's time for my favorite part. We're going to shift all of our multiply layers to be slightly off register. Starting on the Sage multiply layer, I am tapping the arrow up here to grab the entire layer and then moving it over and down just a small shift. Then I'm repeating this on the Lavender multiply layer, shifting this in the same direction. Finally, I am shifting the String multiply layer over and down as well. I really love how immediately this adds dimension. Back in the Layers panel, move up onto the Sparkle layer. For this step, choose a light pink or a white color. Now in this Lights brush set, there are these sparkly, dusty brushes. We're gonna use one of these. I'm selecting the Nebula brush for this. I have the size set to 20%, and I'm going to decrease the opacity down somewhere between 85 or 90%. Now painting directly on top of the sage, I'm just sort of sprinkling this effect over the top. Now I'm moving up to the smoke layer. Still in the lights brush set, I'm going to select this flame eight brush. So these flame brushes, they all look super realistic when used with orange or red to replicate flames. But I have found also that when you paint on low opacity with white, they really look like smoke. So with the size set to 100% and the opacity down to about 10%, I'm going to use this to paint some smoke and circling and wafting around the stage. You can also go in later to adjust the layer opacity if you wanna make this even more transparent. Back on the sparkle layer, I'm going to use this light pink color and in the lights brushes, I'm choosing the luminous bristles brush. I'm setting the size of this brush to about 2%, and I'm drawing in a few of these little sparkles around and on top of the sage.
Now you can add text or lettering or leave it as is. I really like lettering with the neon tube brush from the lights panel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something, maybe learned some new techniques. You can get these brushes following the links below. You can get the starter canvas and color palette by subscribing to my newsletter, also linked below. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for making art with me. I'll see you in the next one.